are you ready to hear what the next book in our Kelly Lane Living Book Club will be? It's time to review the book selected for last month and announce the next selection for this month. Jane Taylor with the Siouxland Libraries is here to discuss a man called Uwe with us, and she's also going to let us in on what book she has selected for April. So, Jane, thanks for being here. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Let's talk about what our book was. Uh, a man called Uwe or Uva. I mean, there's Uwe. Uwe. There's ways to <laughs> pronounce it, but give everybody an idea if you haven't read it yet what what it's about. It's about a gentleman who has just lost his job and his wife, and how he tries to re connect with the life around him in interesting ways that happens with his neighbors and what he's trying to do that keeps getting interrupted. Yeah, and he's, <laughs> he's 59 years old, so to lose his wife at a relatively young yeah. age mm -hmm. uh, was devastating right. to, the, to the, you know, because it turned out that it was, uh, she was his life, and literally. He actually, it seemed like he didn't want to make these relationships with them, but they just kept coming on over to his door <laughs> and kind of being, what he would say, like pests. And uh -huh. I think that just bringing when those relationships were developing and he was older and then with these younger kids, what the neighbors had, it just, mm -hmm. just watching them, it just kind of made you feel like it was their grandpa, even though it wasn't. Because he comes out as, it's to me, it was like when it first started out, it was, it was he was kind of a crabby old man who was stuck in his <laughs> <Crabby>. ways. <laughs> and, and he was not going to veer from his routines, and this is the way life was going to be. And, but then you had to get into the book a little bit more to understand why he was the way he was. Right. And so I had a challenging time in the second half of the book trying to find that empathy or that compassion because we still hadn't got to the point of why he was there yet. And, we, and you know, I knew that he had lost his wife. But yet for him to want to take his own life, to be with her, mm -hmm. and like that connection between, you know, that empathy, that sympathy for the, the, the level of love that he had for her, and it was his life. I mean, it was hard for me to get to there as the book went on, because it's very detailed toward the, toward the end. And you heard all these little sad stories along the way that happened to him, and how his wife kept pulling him out of those I guess routines and thoughts. She kind of made fun of him sometimes right. when he was crabby. So that was fun. So to lose that piece of yourself, I think, was very difficult for him. But then you find out all these stories along the way where when he was younger that he helped with this family that had domestic abuse and this mm -hmm. young man, and they pulled him out. And so he he did these things that were very sympathetic to other people. He just didn't show it on the outside. And the bike. The oh, um, young man that he met, yep. mm -hmm. um, he got on this bike and he yeah. wanted to take this girl and yeah. Yeah. all those things. But I think another point of it, too, was I think it was in the beginning more so when this was happening, when it was going back and forth between the present and then he all of a sudden was having conversations oh. with his wife. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, are we going back in mm -hmm. time or is she still? I was so confused. Until you found out he's at the grave site right. having conversations with her. And right. in the movie, you yeah. see that where he's at the grave grave and you know brushing it off and telling her all this right. stuff that's I going she was on alive, like at first yeah. yes. at first you kind of yeah. pe felt that she was alive cuz he was talking to her like you would mm -hmm. i right. think if you've lost somebody that you've been with for 40 years and right. it just took a time for, for time to understand that deep down he really did have compassion for people mm -hmm. that he did care about people but yet he was so stuck on I mean, all the death that he went through in his life. Right. And it just compounded one after the another. And I think it just really beat him up emotionally that he just, you know, the one person that he really had love with, mm -hmm. they were starting a family. I mean, all those happen. things, the accident yeah. with the bus. I mean, all these things were just like it compounding where I could see where he's like, this is where he wants to be. But he always stepped up. He always yeah. stepped up. He always stepped up. He didn't like brush it aside. He always stepped up and did the right thing. I think that's the other thing. He knew he had a right from wrong, and this was the right way to do things, and this was the wrong way to do things. Yeah, very black and white. <laughs> and yes. bringing it, this was just kind of like a side note thought um, that I had. It wasn't necessarily in the book, but how this whole suicide thing. That's a serious topic. Bringing that into right. the book, and so, but mine was just he would try and plan these suicides but he kept getting interrupted and it just made me remember about little things you've heard when you're walking past a stranger and they um you don't know what type of day they are having mm -hmm. or what their story is and you smile and you say hi and that might have been enough for them to not mm -hmm. take their life mm -hmm. right and right. so it was just like you know those little interruptions kept 
interrupting him for a reason. Yes. And, yeah, that it was yeah. God's will that it wasn't going to happen. Right. He was not going to die this way mm -hmm. because of all the things exactly. that were happening and around him. And then he became him. a grandpa in the end. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, so there's so much good to it. And, and yeah. you mentioned the movie. I mean, after I read the book, then I did find the movie and mm -hmm. I watched it. And, and really, my empathy and sympathy for the man became deeper and deeper mm -hmm. after I watched the movie. Yeah. You could feel the emotion then. You could see it on his face. You know, all the pieces kind of came together right. in the movie, and I really enjoyed it then. Yeah. And you can get that DVD at the library. Yeah. And yeah. this book was used as discussions in the community and yes. for another project as well. So right. how, how was that? It's our one book, Siouxland, for this year. And we are having some book discussions. So if you have picked up the book and you want to talk about it like we have on, on air here, um, we have five book discussions around the community. And I think we're going to list those there. So yeah. please you know, call one of the libraries and get registered for one of those. So what's the next book? What do we have coming oh, for this next month? Book. I don't know. It's a sad story, too. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's still Alice. Um, it is by an author who is a Harvard University professor in neuro neuro neurology. I can't even say that today. Neuroscience. She's a neuroscience okay. professor. And talks about Alzheimer's. But it's from the patient's perspective, not the caregiver's perspective. Okay. So a completely different look at, mm, at the topic. Interesting. Very good. I'm, yeah, that sounds kind of good, actually. Who would you recommend this book to? Actually, anybody. Uh, it's because every, Alzheimer's touches so many people. Right. Mm -hmm. We hear about it. We have grandparents. We have um, friends and family. So, yeah, anybody would really enjoy this book. And why did you pick this one? The, I think the perspective, because she's a 59-year-old woman who finds out, she's fairly young, finds out she has Alzheimer's. And she's also a professor at Harvard. So to go through that grieving process... And what her family goes through, but having it from her side of the story is really interesting. Yeah, yeah it's looking a good book. forward to it. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Jane. You're welcome. On that one.